everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with the My Monthly Hero Arts Card Kit for August of 2018. And remember, this is going to be a five card one kit. I know, but it is five cards, and they're all going to be in this video. I love the theme of this card kit. I am a huge coffee fan. Starbucks is mine. So let's get started with card number one. So in all of the cards, I did do some of the cutting and the coloring and the fussy cutting um, prior um, to these videos, just to save some time. So you can see I've already colored the fancy mug and I used my Prismacolor alcohol markers and I've pulled out my Memento black ink and I'm going to do some stamping and masking. You can see I have my masks off to the right there and ready to go. So I'm going to stamp my first two images because those are the two images that I want to that I want to come to the forefront. Um, so when you do that, you want to stamp those images first, and then you're going to put your masks down, and then you're going to stamp where you want your other images to be. Now the masking paper that I'm using is by Simon Says. Um, so far I like it. I think it's got a very good bond. Um, so I'll be able to put it through the test eventually um, when it comes to doing backgrounds. So that's always the test for me. Um, if a masking paper can withstand that, it's a good masking paper. Absolutely. So once my masks are in place, I'm then going to stamp my other images. Now, remember, they're actually going to be towards the back. So I'm also raising them just a little bit, stamping them higher than what the other two mugs were. It's almost like, you know, when you see something on a table, even though, you know, if one's in the front, one looks higher than the one that's closest to you. Once I have all my images stamped, I'm going to remove the masking paper. I'm going to save the other ones. Wasn't quite sure if I was going to use them. But I did use the die, and it's okay. I'm a little off with the die, because there is a die for that coffee mug. And I chose my sentiment to sit inside this coffee muck, mug, muck, and it says, take a break, because we can always use that. So the alcohol markers that I'm using for the rest of these mugs are the warm shades of gray. I don't know, it sounds like a novel, doesn't it? <laughs> And I chose the 30, 50, and 70%. That's how Prismacolor groups out their grays, whether it's cool. Um, they actually have four. They have neutral, French, um, warm, and cool, I think. Did I say that? Yeah. Um, and they put it by percentages. So I will show you the coloring of this one coffee cup. I am starting out with my light color mapping out. A friend of mine taught me that. Map out where my shades are going to be. I believe that's close to the phrase that she uses. And then I'm coming in with my darks. I have found that when it comes to alcohol marker coloring, I am what I like to call a flicker. Um, I like to flip or flick my pen across the paper to get those um, stripes, I guess or differences when it comes to the shadow. Now, the person that I'm talking about, her name is Courtney Kreber, and I want, I'm gonna link her channel down below. She is alcohol marker. She is alcohol marker, she uses Copex, and she is a one layer card designer. So I encourage you to check her out. I hope you'll go over there and just show her some love because it is phenomenal what she can do with alcohol. And she's taught me a lot. So again, she'll be linked down below. So you can see the rest of the alcohol or the, the mugs are done in the grays. You know, I've looked back at my videos and there is. There's always one card that's black and white with a pop of color. And this is definitely it. So I've also added some grays coming off of those cups just to ground them so that now they're not floating. Um, so just that little bit helps to ground. I wanted to darken up the lid to the takeout coffee cup 
So I'm just using one of the darker shades. Um, matter of fact, the darkest shade that I used before. And I will be popping that up with some foam squares. And then I also popped up the fancy mug with some foam squares as well. So I have some, <coughs> excuse me, I have some dimension on my card. I'm going to adhere this um, eventually. First, I'm going to pull in the vintage photo. Now, you knew the vintage photo was going to come into the cards. Absolutely. Um, I just went around the edge. Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm going to adhere this to my four and a quarter by five and a half. This time, a side folding card base. And all of my card bases are four and a quarter by five and a half. Now, they can either be top folding or side folding. I grabbed the lacquer that came in the kit and I'm just going over where the coffee is in each of the mugs and then I'm also going to go over the takeout lid and just put some of the lacquer on that as well. Yeah, that's when I realized I should do that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always afterthoughts, you know, but we can add at any time. That's the beauty of our craft and paper. So that is pretty much card number one. So for card number two, of course, I had to play with the fancy dye that comes with it. Um, I had to play with the coffee and tea dyed papers. And of course, we all knew my oxides were coming in. So I grabbed a piece of Bristol cardstock and I'm using ground espresso and frayed burlap. And I just grabbed a couple of makeup sponges because I couldn't get to my mini ink blenders. <laughs> they were buried. Um, so in a pinch, I'm not looking to blend because what's going to blend this is water. I'm going to add a ton of water and I'm going to let these oxides mix together on their own. Now, I didn't make this drenched. Um, because I kind of wanted to keep the texture that the, that the inks give. So you can see there's a lot of water on this, but not so much because um, it's slowly moving. You know, it's not dripping right off. But I'm just going to keep turning this and getting those different textures throughout. If I feel that the inks are not moving... Uh, the way that I want them to, then I'll just add a little bit more water to that area so that I can get them moving again. I want the... What I was looking for was to have that oxidation there. So I didn't use uh, my heat gun to dry that. I used... I, I just let it dry naturally. And you get these beautiful absolutely beautiful shades. I, I'm a very huge fan of the oxides. From that panel, I used a stitched square and I used one of the fancy dies. I'm now just going to use my tacky glue from Tonic and I'm going to adhere this right onto the coffee de uh, tea dyed paper. Um, I wanted to give that some stability and I really liked using that paper as the backdrop. I know I've seen so many videos. I love to watch other videos. I'm, I'm so inspired by what <clears throat> others create. Um, I love watching the process and, and just listening to them. I really do enjoy it. Um, but I know I saw a lot of people actually used you know, markers to color this. And I thought it was really cute um, the way they did that. So, you know, there's a lot of inspiration out there. Um, so again, always check it out. You never know what idea you're going to get. I'm going to use some fun foam to prop this up onto my four and a quarter by five and a half uh, top folding card base. And this will cover the whole front of the card panel. I grabbed my Dark Walnut Nouveau Drops, and I'm just going to add some accents coming off of the sign. Um, so they're going to trail up into the canopy of that card. The sentiment that I chose 
says life begins after coffee. I don't know about that, but I know I need a lot of coffee. My husband knows that if I don't have a cup of coffee in my hand in the morning, he should not speak to me. <laughs> yeah, it's that way. So for card number three, um, this one I enjoyed. I pulled out just my white Prismacolor pencil. I pulled out the blender, which is really a colored pencil as well, but strange as it is, it's colorless. So I grabbed that as well. I used one of my uh, stitch rectangles from Lawn Fawn and one of the smaller ones. And what I'm going to do is I've grabbed the mugs, the coffee mugs, and I'm going to stamp them in my Gina K white pigment ink. I, I'm a fan of the Gina K white pigment. Um, I know there's others out there, but for some reason I am always drawn to her white pigment. I like the way it stamps. I like the coverage that it gives. Um, I don't know. There's just something about that. Excuse me. And for each mug, I'm using some, um, the whip topping. <clears throat> I'm adding that as well. And yes, I'm seeing all the lines, but that's okay. Now, since I use the white pigment, it takes a long time to dry. It's like our VersaFine, even though they say that's quick dry. So I'm using my white embossing powder to emboss all those images. After that's embossed, I'm then coming in with my Ranger Emboss It pen, and I want to fill in the whip topping. I want that to be solid. So I'm really using this pen, and I just had to pull out the puffy embossing powder that was in this kit. So I'm just going to go through, cover all of those, and then make sure after I have a couple done, I'm then going to coat it with the puff embossing powder. You know, it's when you put it on, it looks very uh, gritty. Um, but once you put heat to it, it really does puff up. And I just really liked the look of that. So again, it is a colorless blender. Um, they are sold separately, so I have a bunch of them. I have a tin, or excuse me, a jar that sits off the side of my table that literally just holds my blenders um, and my white colored pencils. I have tons of them because I use those the most, um, whether it's the Faber-Castell or whether it's the Prismacolors. Um, and my, blend, my colorless blenders are in there. So you can see I'm taking that colored pencil and I'm just going on one side. Now, these images are all over. You know, they're upside down. They're on their side. So you're not going to have the same um, shadow that's going to come in. So what I did was for every mug, the shadow was on the left hand side. So the light source for every mug was coming in from the right, even though they're all over the place. I'm then taking the blender, the colorless pencil, and I'm going over the white colored pencil areas. And what that's doing is it's smoothing it out. It's, it's almost like Gamzol is going to do it more, but if you, if you don't want to use Gamzol, if, cause you you're afraid of that odorless, um, concern that's with it, then you want to go with that pencil because it, it's going to varnish. It's going to, it's going to burnish all of that together and make it smooth and even out the color. You can still build on top of it, um, but not as much. Okay. So that's kind of like a synopsis there. Sorry. I got a little Gabby. The sentiment that I chose was you were the cream in my coffee hence all the whipped cream in the background. Um, and again, I stamped that in the white pigment ink and I used my white embossing powder just to help make that stand out. The white pigment, or excuse me, the white embossing powder that I used is by Recollections and I get that at my local Michaels. So I grabbed my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base and I'm going to prop, I'm sitting here thinking, there goes that finger, and I'm going to prop this panel up onto that card base. 
what I was thinking about there, it looked neat, but it was really standing out. Um, it just looked like it was missing something um, that needed to be added to the, to the card somehow. What I liked about the base itself was it looked like chalk. So we have this, you know, this whole white and brown going on there, but it just had a chalky feel to it. So of course my oxides came back out and I used the, um, was it the ground espresso? Uh, one of my browns, <laughs> I believe it was the ground espresso and I added water. I just put it on an acrylic block. So I'm using one of my brushes and I'm just going to splatter this all over the top of this. I want it to go on the white. I want it to go on top of the mugs. I want it to go on top of the whipped cream. And then I wanted a focal point. So I just wanted a drop. So I just kind of painted that on because the, the, the flicking was not working for me. It wasn't giving me a big enough um, drop. I thought I was going to get a bigger one. So with that little drop, it's like we spilled coffee on the card. So for my next card, I wanted to, you know, it's funny. They give you tissue paper in each of the card kits as well. Um, sometimes I use it. I know I used it. I did this technique um, in another one of my videos. I believe it was the My Favorite Thing Snowflakes because I was inspired um, by a channel, um, Attic Lean. And I'll link her down below too. She's doing some really neat things as well. Um, so I did all of my die cutting in a very dark brown cardstock. I pulled out my Deco Art um, Matte Medium. And I'm putting these, I'm gluing all of these down onto a card panel that I used one of my stitched rectangles by Lawn Fawn for. And then I'm going to grab my tissue paper because of course it was craft. Um, so I'm going to make sure that this is still wet with the matte medium because I'm going to put my tissue paper right on top of that. Now I didn't set it right so I could get it down in one shot and that's okay. I'm just going over it with some more matte medium. I'm going to tear off a section there, making sure I'm not exposing any more of the white card. And I'm just going to layer other pieces on top in different types of areas. So I'm actually pulling from around the side of the card. I know that that bottom right hand cup is where my sentiment is going to sit. So I wanted to make sure that was pretty well up onto the card panel itself. I did use my heat tool to dry this once we trimmed off the edges. So you can do that either way. You don't have to wait. Um, sometimes drying it first, it's easier to cut. And that is, I'm sorry, that is what I did here. Um, when it's wet, it gets all over the place. I used a lot of my anti-static tool because I didn't know if I dry, dried it all the way. <laughs> so I didn't want the white all over because I did want to use my white embossing powder. And the sentiment that I chose was get stuff done. On the inside of my card, I chose the bird's eye view of the coffee cup. And inside that, I stamped, but first coffee. And I chose the Dark Chocolate by Gina K to stamp those images. So again, something that goes on the inside of the card. I find myself doing that more and more. So it's, it's kind of, it's very different for me. I never did that before. I'm kind of having fun with it. So again, I'm using my tacky glue only because there's so much. This could still be damp. Um, and I want to make sure that I have a really strong adhes uh, adhesive back to this panel, my mixed media panel. Putting big drops of dark walnut Nouveau drops. And now I'm coming in with Simply White. And I'm going off to the side because I'm going to use a needle. And I want to swirl those two together. 
So you don't want to keep swirling, but if you swirl like maybe three times, the colors won't mix. They'll stay separate. So I'm just swirling just a couple times, um, you know, to make it look like the bird's eye view of froth or something. That one got mixed up. It kind of mixed together just a little bit. So I'm just adding a little, swirling it on top, and then I'll make sure I clean off the tip of the Nouveau Drop container. For our final card, I pulled out my Stampin' Up! alcohol markers. I really do like these. I think these alcohol markers are great for the beginner who wants to give alcohol markers a try. So I cut some pieces from the coffee and tea dyed papers and I used my stitch squares from My Favorite Things. I stamped two of my images with my Memento ink and I did color them already. Magic of video. And then I did use the dyes to cut them out. So one I colored in an aqua color and another mug I cut in like a coral color. I'm going to adhere my squares onto my panel and for my panel I did use one of my Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle and with this being the last card I have to say the wonky stitch rectangle by My Favorite Things did not make an appearance. Oh my goodness. Oh that's very surprising to me. Anyway so I adhered those squares down onto my card panel and then I'm going to look at the placement. So the aqua mug is going to be on the outside. So I just wanted to set that in place to make sure that I wanted to use one of the beautiful swirls um, that come up. Now I'm not sure if this was supposed to go, I think that was supposed to be for the top of a mug or something like that, but I just liked it for an outside swirl. <laughs> so I used it for that. So once that was stamped, and I wanted to use my VersaFine because I wanted a really dark impression, I set my mug in place and I propped that up using some foam squares. The sentiment that I chose here is says, thanks, a whole latte. So I'm going to set that aside, and then from inside my card base, I'm actually going to use the coral one, and I'm going to adhere that down on the right-hand corner. And then I want to make sure that that also has a swirl that comes off of it. And I'm actually going to add a sentiment on the inside of this card as well. So you kind of have a, it's, it could be like a, a, a husband and wife. Um, so you can do different things. I added the sentiment world's, excuse me, world's best friend to the inside. So you have the outside, thanks a whole latte, and you're saying thank you to your world's best friend. I am once again going to grab my Dark Walnut Nouveau Drops. They were the running theme, of course, because they were brown. And I'm just placing some accents off of the swirl and the sentiment. I'm going to grab my Spectrum Noir glitter pen and I'm just going to go over the mug just to give it a little bit of sparkle and I will also do that to the mug on the inside of our card as well. Just to give it a little bit of accent. Now I did add some to the coffee on the inside but I am going to use the lacquer pen for the one on the outside. I didn't want to take a chance of me forgetting not leaving that open and gluing my card shut. So I hope you did enjoy these cards. I really did have fun with them. Um, this one, I really did enjoy the theme um, because it is something that I really do enjoy. But of course, here are the close-ups in regular speed so that you can see them. Maybe you missed something in the video that kind of goes a little bit quick there. If you did like this video, hit the thumbs up. That lets me know if you like it or not. By all means, if you haven't subscribed yet, oh, please do so. I'd love to have you here as part of our group. Any questions or comments, make sure you leave those down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Just know that I do answer all of those comments down below as quickly as possible. 
all the products that I used outside of the kit will also be listed below. But you know what? I have a habit, and that habit is I always forget something. I know. If I do, please let me know in the comments, and I will make sure I get that link to you again as soon as I can. But I will get that link to you and update the video description. I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope everyone's enjoying their week. But always remember what's most important to me. Always be creative.